Hello everyone. Today I'm giving a presentation on how to successfully integrate a cover glass onto our new product, the VL53L5CX. So when you put a cover glass on top of a time of flight device, the issue that occurs is crosstalk. So you might ask, what is crosstalk? Well, below is a diagram showing exactly how uh, we want the device to operate and what we don't want to operate. So the green line is showing exactly how the time of flight works. We have a laser emitter, the photon goes out, hits a target, comes back, and we get a nice reading. The issue with the cover glass is a photon can hit uh, the cover glass, bounce back to our device multiple times, and come back and finally hit our receiver, giving you a very short distance um, as far as the total range. We don't want that to happen. Um, but the nice thing about our device is we can characterize what the crosstalk is, measure it, and then remove it uh, when doing final measurements. So in this presentation, what we're trying to show is the best properties of the cover glass to give us the least amount of crosstalk. But on top of that, at the very end, we're going to do a calibration. So whatever crosstalk is remaining, we can remove it. The first step for successfully integrating a cover glass is to obtain one of our application EVO boards uh, with our, the time of flight sensor that you're going to be using for your application. And from this, you can actually do a full calibration on a cover glass. So this slide is showing um, the evaluation kit for the VL53L5CX. When you get this, it's going to have the expansion board, which is the big blue board. Um, on top of that, you need an STM32 nucleo board, uh, which is going to actually give uh, the communication to our sensor to configure it and operate it. Also included uh, in our EVO kit is we got some cover spacers. Um, these spacers basically let you adjust the height of the cover glass to, from the top of our device. Um, obviously, um, it is impossible to have a cover glass touching our device because in a manufacturing environment, you can't get those precise of tolerances. So we give some different thicknesses of spacers so you can put the cover glass uh, to match whatever your product will be. We also give an example cover glass uh, that has an IR ink coating on it. Uh, but obviously um, the perfect test is if you can use the actual cover glass of your final product with the spacers um, to match the space in your final product, then you can actually measure the crosstalk uh, for this device. The next step is to pick the cover glass that fits your application. Um, in this, um, many different criteria are needed, and we're going to go over the criteria uh, that will give you the best performance uh, with as little crosstalk as possible. Before picking a cover glass, um, many people ask, why do we need a cover glass in the first place? The main reason for this is to protect our device. Um, our, our device is not hermetically sealed. So if you want to ensure that no dust gets inside our part or water or any sort of contaminants uh, that could uh, interfere with the long-term performance of our board, a cover glass is needed uh, to ensure protection of our device. In choosing a cover glass, uh, the main things we want to do is minimize the haze. A haze on a cover glass will actually take the photons hitting it and spread it out in all directions. What we want is that the transmitter of our device goes cleanly through the cover glass and um, hits the target and comes back with no interference. To do this, you want the cover glass uh, to have no structural defects. Um, we want it as flat as possible, no anti-reflectance coatings on there, and um, be very careful on choosing the anti-fingerprint coating that you put on the cover glass. Some anti-fingerprint um, materials can actually increased uh, the crosstalk dramatically. Um, so we want uh, it to be as, as low a crosstalk as possible. One thing to note is if you put an IR ring um, that it basically uh, lets all the 940 nanometer laser uh, to go through the glass um, and blocks out the visible light, uh, you can see two pictures here, one where we show a rough ink and one we, where we show a smooth ink. Essentially, we do not want uh, the surface to look rough when looking through a microscope. You want it to be as smooth as possible, um, and this will reduce the crosstalk as much as possible. One other thing is the cover glass transmission. We want as much of the IR to go through as possible. 
So um, in our guidelines, we recommend that your transmittance uh, of 940 nanometer is greater than 90%. Sometimes that can't be helped that sometimes for your application, you might have a lower reflectance, or I mean a lower transmittance. But just note that the lower the transmittance of the glass, um, the more the performance of the part will be reduced. For mechanical requirements, um, the closer the cover glass is to our part, uh, the less crosstalk it will have. So we recommend having a, an air gap of 0.5 millimeters or less. Obviously, if you can have it touching, um, it's going to give you the best performance, but obviously in, in a manufacturing environment, that is not as, always possible. The second thing is the actual thickness of the cover glass. Um, the photons can bounce within the cover glass, so the thinner it is, um, the less crosstalk uh, you're going to have. So we recommend a one millimeter thickness of a cover glass uh, will give you decent performance yet give you some good strength. This is showing basically a side view of how the uh, cover glass looks um, on our VL5305 device. Um, the IR coating, we want it to be on the bottom side of the glass, not the top, uh, to help reduce uh, the uh, crosstalk as much as possible. And another thing to consider is tilt. On the bottom, we're showing how the device might be tilted with the cover glass. Um, what we recommend is that the cover glass is as parallel to our device as possible. Uh, anytime you put a slight slant on it, um, it will definitely increase the crosstalk uh, in the final application. Another thing to consider uh, to reduce crosstalk is a gasket. Uh, so a gasket can be made of foam or rubber um, and it's placed on top of our device. Uh, you put hole openings in um, the gasket so essentially the gasket is touching the top of our part and it's touching the bottom of the glass um, and essentially the photons are then guided through these holes to leave the device um, and come back only um, through these holes by which we're reducing crosstalk as uh, crosstalk can be caused uh, from the photons coming out of our device hitting the glass and bouncing back to our device by having the gasket in between the transmitter and the receiver uh, this can reduce crosstalk dramatically this also helps in situations if you need to have an air gap more than 0.5 millimeters the last step is to actually do a crosstalk calibration um, ST provides a software um, that will do the calibration, so this can be done in a production environment or in a laboratory environment, whatever is needed for your typical application. This slide is showing the actual results of crosstalk calibration on our VL53L5. There's actually two components that we have in our calibration. The first is the signature or the shape uh, of how the photons are coming back to our device. Um, and the second one is the actual amount of crosstalk in each of the 64 zones of our part. With this, uh, um, you can see that uh, the crosstalk is as high as 45 uh, kilophotons per second and as low as uh, 10 kilophotons per second. So with knowing both of these information, um, we can then know that this crosstalk is always coming because of the cover glass and we can subtract this out uh, from each individual histogram on the part, giving you then perfect results uh, every time you do ranging. So in conclusion, when selecting the cover glass for your device, the main considerations that we want you to choose from is that the cover glass is very flat, has a very smooth surface, especially when looking under a microscope. This will ensure that your haze is as low as possible. Uh, we want to optical transmission to be greater than 90%. Uh, we want the transparency uh, of this 90% to be at 940 nanometers, which is uh, the, the transmission of the laser on our VL53L5CX. Some good examples is uh, a glass, an acrylic, a PMMA, or a polycarbonate material. Um, the cover glass material from glass or plastic, we don't want to have an anti-reflectance coating at all. Um, we want the clean cover glass, so no dirt on uh, the cover glass. If, if dirt is added afterwards, um, such as dust from sitting from a long period of time, 
this will add crosstalk over time and uh, a new calibration could be needed or you could apply a higher crosstalk value uh, for each zone to compensate for any dust or dirt that is accumulating over time. For the mechanical uh, constraints, we want the air gap to be as small as possible. Um, we want the glass to be parallel with our de device and the thinner uh, the glass, the better, uh, where we recommend a one millimeter uh, cover glass thickness. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to go to our website at www.st.com slash time of flight or contact your local ST sales representative.